The end of watch for Friday, April 19th, is for gospel and contemporary Christian singer, Mandisa. And in today's episode, we will highlight her upbringing, her time in the spotlight, the highs and lows of her career, and her unfortunate passing at the age of 47. She was born Mandisa Lynn Hunley on October 2nd, 1976 in Citrus Heights, California. Her father had left the family when she was very young. She said that his abandonment led her to use food for comfort, and when she noticed she could sing, she would put on performances whenever she was able to see him in an effort to warrant his love. At the age of 16, she decided to give her life to Christ, but still dealt with unfortunate circumstances that caused her to eat more as a source of security. And though her excessive weight became an insecurity for her, singing for God is what gave her the highest joy. After graduating from El Camino Fundamental High School, she would attend American River College in Sacramento, where she studied vocal jazz. She then moved to Tennessee to attend Fisk University, where she was a member of the Fisk Jubilee Singers and later graduated with a Bachelor of Music degree with a concentration in vocal performance. People had often gave her praises for her singing talents, and by the early 2000s, she had joined the worship team for Living Proof Ministries with Beth Moore and would do several live events. It was during this time that her mother caught one of the live shows, and after being moved by the Spirit and having witnessed the wonders it had done for Mandisa, her mother decided to rededicate her life to Christ, which was a victory. Now around this time, American Idol was getting off the ground, and it was her new favorite show, but she had already passed the age limit, so she couldn't audition. But in early 2005, they raised the age limit to 28, and being months away from her 29th birthday, she figured it was now or never to get her voice out there to be heard. So she flew to Chicago to audition for the show's fifth season. Hey, what's your name? Mandisa. Mandisa what? Just Mandisa. Just Mandisa. The first name is enough to deal with, I think. All right, so what are you going to sing? I can do Fallen. All right. All right, here we go. I keep on falling. <laughs> Get down, man. Simon was rocking. Ah, terrific. I mean, everything I hoped you would be, you were on that, Thank Mandisa. You. And I like the fact that you want to be known as one person. <laughs> I'm supposing we can all say together on the count of three. One, one two, two, three. three. Yes. 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 Welcome to Hollywood. Welcome to Hollywood. Mandisa had been overjoyed to know that she would be in the running to appear on the show. But when she saw her clip air live on TV, she and her family were shocked to hear just what the judges had said behind her back. Do we have a bigger stage this year? <laughs> oh, come on. She's got like a Frenchie. Forget power. Frenchie, she's like France. <laughs> and just like that, the fears and insecurities she had about her weight had reached their peak as she was essentially humiliated nationwide. She later told CBN, it's been the biggest struggle of my life because it's something I feel so vulnerable about. And for him to have said that and for it to air on national television, I was devastated. After the show was over, just a bunch of my friends gathered around me and they began to pray for me. They began to pray for Simon. They asked the Lord to help me to forgive him. She said that the situation was set up by producers who had warned her that Simon would make reference to her weight and that she should tell him off. But when she saw him again, she would take the high road instead. This could get a little uncomfortable. Well, you didn't need a bigger stage, but you could have got a bigger chair. (laughs) Simon, a lot of people want me to say a lot of things to you. But this is what I want to say to you. Is that, yes, you hurt me, and I cried. And it was painful. It really was. But I want you to know that I've forgiven you. And that you don't need someone to apologize in order to forgive somebody. And I figured that if Jesus could die so that all of my wrongs could be forgiven, I can certainly extend that same grace to you. So I just wanted you to Amen. know. Amen. Mandisa, I'm humbled. Amen. Come here, give me a kiss. Yeah. Come here. Well put. Give me a kiss. I'm just Thank so you. appalling, aren't I? Hmm? You are, but... Well, we like You're each coming. other now. Mandisa. Yes. Aren't you glad I sit next to him? I can stomp him, sock him, and do it. Right, what would Lisa, I do with that? I will feel one millimeter small, so I'll carry on with, <laughs> <laughs> with what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, and I am sorry to tell you, 
you are going to have to go through this again because you're through to the next. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. I thank love you so much. much. I do apologize. Oh, finally, I heard it. Wow, thank you. She would go on to compete and continuously blew audiences away with her powerhouse vocals. Even publications like Entertainment Weekly were rooting for her throughout the season. And famed singer Barry Manilow had told her, hey, if this doesn't work out, you ought to come and work with me. She got down to the top nine, but after deciding to take the audience to church with her rendition of Mary Mary's gospel hit, Shackles, she faced tough criticisms from the judges. But the crowd was here for it. They ain't care what you say. But ultimately, the judges had placed her in the bottom three and she would be eliminated after one final performance of Shania Twain's hit, Any Man of Mine. But a minor setback would only serve for a major comeback, as God had bigger plans. The day after being eliminated from American Idol, she would appear on Live with Regis and Kelly to perform the song, I Don't Hurt Anymore. She then joined Gladys Knight and others at the Apollo Theater for the Benefit Concert, Back to Harlem, to raise money for various charities. She would go on to secure a record deal with EMI Sparrow Records and got right to work on her debut album, which she titled True Beauty, a classic response to the haters who taunted her looks, as she's beautiful in God's eyes. The album broke the Billboard chart record for a female debut in Christian music and is the largest female debut that EMI Sparrow Records had ever seen. And she decided to include her cover of Shackles that she had been ridiculed for on the show, showing that she wasn't ashamed to sing his praises. She dropped her debut single, Only the World, which was a nice encouraging bop at that time, and it quickly became the most added song on Christian radio stations and went number one on the Billboard Hot Singles sales chart, staying on the chart for 49 weeks. The song encouraged followers of Christ to remain optimistic, as these trials and tribulations are only the world, and that when it's all over, heaven awaits. But you gotta complete the mission in the meantime. The lyrics goes as follows. I'm surrounded by all the pain and the strife, but I know it's all right, cause it's only the world I'm living in. It's only today that I've been given. There ain't no way I'm giving in, cause it's only the world. I know the best is still yet to come, cause even when my days in the world are done, there's gonna be so much more than only the world for me. You better say that. This song also received heavy rotation on my little iPod Nano at the time. <laughs> Man, you couldn't tell me nothing. And soon, Mandisa would be featured on a handful of collaborations with other faith-based artists like Kirk Franklin and Toby Mac. Also around this time, she snagged a modeling contract with Ashley Stewart and landed a book deal with Tyndale House Publishers to release her autobiography, Idle Eyes, My New Perspective on Faith, Fat, and Fame, which featured a foreword by Beth Moore. It was apparent that Simon and others' fat-shaming comments really did a number on Mandisa and it still bothered her to the point where she decided to get fit. And by 2009, she was in magazines showing off an 85 pound weight loss and eventually got down 120 pounds. She released her album Freedom later that year and she expressed the feeling of finally being free of yesterday's bondage and free from the comforting yet damaging old habits like excessive eating. This album, along with her third album, What If We Were Real, would both be nominated for Grammys in the gospel and contemporary Christian categories. But it would be her fourth album, Overcomer, that would be the ultimate highlight of her career and her favorite album. It was inspired by her close friend and backup singer, Lakeisha Mitchell, whose doctors discovered that she had stage three breast cancer while also pregnant with her second child. Keisha made the tough decision to reduce the intensity of her chemotherapy treatments in order to spare the child's life, which the doctors warned would shorten her lifespan. Mandisa was motivated by Keisha's perseverance and made this album to encourage her friend throughout her pregnancy. And the lead single, also titled Overcomer, harped on the will to overcome all odds and win life's battles. The single was an instant hit, being certified gold, and the music video featured many different survivors, like Robin Roberts, a popular news anchor who overcame her own battle with breast cancer, and Gabby Giffords, a politician who survived the tragedy at Tucson after a bullet struck her in the head. She has since recovered much of her ability to walk, speak, read, and write. This album and the single touched the hearts of so many, shooting to number one on the Christian music charts and winning Mandisa two Grammy Awards for Best Contemporary Christian Album and Song. However, while she was flattered, she declined to attend the Grammy Awards, saying, I have fallen prey to the alluring pool of flesh, pride, and selfish desires quite a bit recently. I knew that submerging myself into an environment that celebrates those things was risky for me at this time. 
She instead held events to raise funds to pay off her friend's medical bills and any additional expenses for the family. Everyone came together in support of Keisha, and her child was born a healthy baby boy. Mandisa truly believed that God had answered their prayers and that he had shown that Keisha was going to overcome all odds and be in her child's life for a very long time. So when she lost her battle with breast cancer just a year later and passed at the age of 40, it had sent Mandisa into a deep depression as she was angry with God. She felt betrayed and tricked by God and couldn't understand why he didn't heal Keisha. It was supposed to bring the story full circle and make for a great testimony, if for no other reason but that her child could have his mother. She later told People Magazine, Man, when she passed away, it shook the foundations underneath me. I sank into a deep pit of depression. I turned back to my old ways, which is food. And eventually, Mandisa had gained back all the pounds she had previously lost, plus an additional 75 pounds. She became a recluse and said, When you're battling shame, you don't want to leave the house. And I didn't leave the house for the most part. When I got up, I went downstairs, sat in a recliner, and I watched television nonstop. The only time I left was when I got tired of pizza delivery and decided to get Mickey D's. She also revealed that she contemplated ending her own life. After internalizing negative thoughts about herself, her career, and just the overall meaning to life. And it got to the point where she didn't want to live on this earth anymore. She just wanted to be at peace with God in heaven. That's it. But after an intervention by her close friends and some counseling, she discovered that she had a higher calling and that her time wasn't done yet. And after three years, she re-emerged with her album, Out of the Dark, speaking openly about her struggle with depression. Her single, Unfinished, spoke on just how God wasn't through with her yet. And as for Keisha, she said, we're living in a very small part of our lives right now. When you look at eternity, I know Keisha's story continues on. Right now, I just have a finite view of what life is. Throughout the pandemic, she held down several projects, a talk show called What If We Were Real, which delved into love and relationships from the Christian perspective, and a monthly interactive Zoom experience called Mornings with Mandisa and Friends. She would release three new EPs containing songs to encourage and uplift others in the midst of these trying times. She also released three Christmas EPs to coincide with many of the Christmas compilations that she's done over the years. But her bouts with depression and the war within her mind raged on, and she wanted to speak out about the realities of her experience. Mandisa had been such an inspiration and encouraging light to others, no one would have expected that she suffered with depression and thoughts of ending her life to begin with. And she did have some pushback from some people of faith, as topics of depression and anxiety are often shunned. Like, why are you still having these thoughts? God delivered you from it, right? So that should be the end of it. Pray yourself out of whatever the devil is telling you. But it's not always that simple. And in 2022, she released her memoir, Out of the Dark, My Journey Through the Shadows to Find God's Joy. And she would be featured on several podcasts speaking about these struggles and how God continues to be the light that pulls her through on a daily. There's a lot of shame surrounding depression and feeling like you are less of a Christian if it's something that you battle with. Mm -hmm. But as I read the Bible, I see a lot of people who I think struggled with depression. Yeah. And what I see is God's compassion. And I don't see God turning his back away and saying, I'm so disappointed in you. I'm good all the time. And how could you question that? What I see is him going to that person in love and acceptance. And it's through his grace that they start to come out of it. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's the conversation I want to start in Christendom is that it's not something that we should hide and act like it doesn't exist. Yeah. I think it's something we need to talk about because a lot of people are wrestling with things like this. In October of 2023, she would perform at the Women After God's Own Heart concert. And for much of the football season that year, she would repost her Tennessee Titans as she was a huge fan. But she went silent and there would be no posts from any of her social media accounts in 2024. And on April 18th, 2024, Mandisa would be found deceased in her home in Nashville without apparent cause, rhyme, or reason. Her father confirmed her death to TMZ saying it was unexpected and a total shock to the family, that there were no known health issues prior to her passing, and that her cause of death is currently unknown. According to the Tennessean, there's an active death investigation. Franklin police declined to confirm Mandisa as the deceased in the death investigation but the address of the home where the investigation is taking place has been tied to the singer. A spokesperson for the department said, what I can confirm is that our officers responded to a residence for a death investigation Thursday evening, and it's being actively investigated. David Pierce, the chief media officer of K-Love, 
a popular Christian radio network that Mandisa was heavily involved with, said in a post, Mandisa struggled and she was vulnerable enough to share that with us, which helped us talk about our own struggles. Mandisa's struggles are over. She is with the God she sang about now. While we are saddened, Mandisa is home. We're praying for Mandisa's family and friends and ask you to join us in prayer. While many theories run rampant online, some health related, others vaccine related, and many well-intended fans posting tributes online and then leaving links to the suicide hotline, no official cause or manner of death has been revealed to the public as of the making of this video. What we do know is that Mandisa was talented, giving, and gracious, and only wanted to light up the world and love her savior. The world lost a good one with her death, but I find comfort in knowing that she is in the arms of the creator and is suffering no more. My thoughts and condolences go to her family, close friends, and the fans. Rest in peace, Mandisa. This is Justified by Jury. Y'all know how to hit that like and that subscribe. Hit that notification bell, and I will catch y'all in the next video.